Sick of getting blisters? Stop slipping and just be comfortable with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Great fit, great comfort, lots of grip, and an even better price. Available now at puregripsocks.com. The Morelia Neo series from Mizuno has been around for over 10 years now, and throughout its entire run, the same base core concepts of this football boot have remained the same a lightweight construction, a kangaroo leather upper, and a modern take on a conical stud pattern. With each new model offering changes, but changes in the name of refinement. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the brand new, but also very familiar, made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 4 Beta, a pair of football boots that unless you really know your Mizunos, could easily be mistaken for the Neo 3 Beta it replaces, both because it launches in the same white, black, and red colorway, but also because the boots themselves look almost exactly the same, which is interesting to note because what Mizuno have done here with the Neo 4 Beta is while maintain the same core concept, almost every element of this football boot has been changed in one way or another. With the price tag also being one of those changes where you are now looking at the most expensive top end football boot currently on the market. It's not at the moment available in US markets. We only have a European retail price, but the retail in Europe is 350 euros, where previously the Neo 3 Beta made in Japan retailed for $320. Once they are available in the US, I would expect the retail to be anywhere between 300 30 and 340 which is a lot of money for a pair of football boots. And even though Made in Japan Mizuno build quality and materials are second to none, when you're talking about a pair of football boots that cost nearly $350, how could they possibly be worth the money? Well, that's exactly the question that I hope to help you answer in today's video as we go over all the details of the Neo 4 Beta, talk about all the differences compared to the Neo 3 Beta that it replaces, as well as take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more please stick around and if you are interested in a pair for yourself at the moment availability is limited but eventually you will be able to pick them up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive sr4u coupon codes via the links down below and as always guys if you enjoy these brutally honest reviews don't forget to drop a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots of 2023 so first things first i just wanted to give a little side by side of the neo 3 and neo 4 beta where as you can see, especially when you're talking about the uppers, there is visually not really much of a difference at all. The stitching pattern in the leather is identical. They both have that little tail at the end. All the markings and branding is pretty much the same. There are, of course, some very subtle differences, which I'll point out in just a second. But realistically, the visual distinction that you're going to be able to make is on the heel counter, this being the Neo 3 Beta and this being the Neo 4 Beta. And then obviously what's happening on the sole plate, the tooling is technically new and the way that they've done the reinforcement through the midfoot again is a little bit different on the new model but other than that visually the boots look almost identical but let's be honest this shouldn't be too surprising given that the Morelia Neo has pretty much always looked like this as for the boots themselves like I mentioned the core recipe of the Morelia Neo has not changed here with the latest iteration you're still going to find incredibly soft and premium kangaroo leather through the forefoot with a very similar mesh based synthetic material through the midfoot and of course the one piece upper construction that was introduced with the Neo Beta variations. You're also going to find a low cut construction, a little extension tail, and for the most part an upper that hasn't changed much from the previous model, which is why I want to focus on the four things that I think are noticeable differences even if they are only subtle. The first thing being that the transition from the leather to the synthetic on this Neo 4 Beta is just incredible. I don't know how they managed to make this feel that much softer than the Neo 3, which was already incredibly soft, but the pliability of this upper is unbelievable. Absolutely zero break in time, and honestly, some of the softest feeling materials in football boots that money can buy, super, super impressive. The second thing that I noticed is that the leather in the forefoot, again, top of the line. You are not going to find better kangaroo leather from any other brand. Made in Japan Mizuno just does it the best. It does feel slightly more padded than what you found on the Neo 3 Beta. Although, when I put the Neo 4 on one foot and the Neo 3 on the other foot and started juggling a ball, I can't say that I could truly tell a difference, but in terms of in-hand feel, 
This upper does feel slightly more plush in the leather section. The material through the midfoot, this mesh, does also feel a little bit more pliable. It does appear to have a slightly different mesh pattern than the previous model, but again, this difference is very, very subtle, and once broken in, none of that is really gonna be all that noticeable. The third thing that I did notice as a change is the type of knit that you have across the top of the foot. It's a completely different pattern and actually maintains more tension. They say it's supposed to stretch better, but I actually found that it was the opposite, where putting these boots on is a little bit trickier than the Neo 3 Beta. The opening doesn't stretch quite as much, but it does have a nice amount of tension through the midfoot if that's something that you're looking for. And honestly, with the one piece upper construction that this model has, the overall wrap through the midfoot and general shaping of the football boot is pretty much as good as it gets. Really, really impressive. And then the fourth thing that I think is really noticeable is that it's still a low cut boot, but they've actually extended it on the sides by five millimeters, which in turn makes this area of the foot wrap the side of your ankle and heel that much more closely. Typically what you find with one piece uppers is because everything is attached right here, you end up with these bulges on the side of your ankle. This I thought wrapped my ankle more closely than any other one piece upper construction that I've ever felt on a pair of football boots. And in general, the comfort was fantastic. The fit is top notch. And again, it's a level of refinement that you expect from Mizuno. And that's, I guess what you get for your money here. Another very small change is you'll notice that the cutouts in the upper are kind of like oval shaped slots on the Neo 3 versus perfectly round cutouts on the Neo 4. This doesn't really matter as much, but you will notice at the top, you basically just have one single lace hole option for that top lacing position, where on the Neo 3, they did give you that additional lacing position if you wanted to have a slightly deeper grab in the heel. Personally, I'm a fan of having extra options, even though I never really felt the need to use it on the Neo 3. But if that is something that you were doing, just realize that they have taken that away on the Neo 4 for whatever reason. As far as the touch, feel, and overall performance of the upper is concerned, however, especially once broken in, it's very, very difficult to tell a difference between the Neo 3 and the Neo 4 Beta. The leather is incredibly soft, and definitely the boot remains as kind of a standout in the speed category, particularly if you want that leather softness, both in terms of comfort as well as touch on the ball in the forefoot area. I just think that the overall refinement of the Neo 4 Beta, the transition from leather to this mesh-based synthetic, it does feel that little bit more streamlined, but again, the difference is extremely subtle. At the rear, you do still have the external heel counter, something that's been consistent with every generation of Morelli and Neo. You also have that kind of little extension piece in the form of this elasticated knit material that effectively does nothing, but does look quite cool. You have a really soft suede lining material with plenty of padding, incredibly comfortable, great overall lockdown, and then the insole fully removable. This has changed in terms of the lining material now being made from this kind of synthetic suede microfiber type material that grips your socks really really nicely rather than the smooth mesh that you had on the previous generation this i think just feels that little bit more premium and as far as the insole itself is concerned it's a single layer of this white foam that actually has some really nice density to it but overall is pretty standard for a top end football boot moving to the base you will find that the neo 4 beta does feature brand new sole plate tooling however there is no difference in feel whatsoever, at least that I could tell. I do think it looks a little bit cooler where you can see that this kind of split kind of tapers off into more of a Y shape. So it might look like the stiffened area might be a little bit elongated on the Neo 4 through the midfoot compared to the Neo 3. But again, the end result is pretty well the same. It's still very, very flexible through the forefoot, giving the boot a very natural sensation, which in turn I think works very well with the super soft and pliable kangaroo leather upper that you have on this football boot with plenty of rigidity in general through the midfoot heel and of course the heel counter area, which again has been reworked, but isn't noticeably different in any way whatsoever. And as far as the stud pattern is concerned, the layout of the studs, the shaping of the studs, the angle of the studs is all identical. And honestly, despite being all conical in shape, which I think is typically associated with an old school style of football boot, they actually dig into the ground quite nicely and provide more aggressive traction than I think a lot of people would expect 
plenty of bite while still maintaining that freedom to twist and pivot. It might look fairly traditional, but it feels very aggressive. And honestly, again, makes this a super unique element of the Morelia Neo formula. Given how subtle the changes are between three and four, you probably wouldn't expect that much of a weight difference. And surprise, surprise, they are almost exactly the same in weight, both in the same size 9.5 US. We'll start off with the Neo 3 beta, and you can see that they weigh in at 7.4 ounces, the equivalent of 210 grams. Then if we throw the four on the scale, you can see that they weigh in at 7.2 ounces, the equivalent of 205 grams. Not that it's gonna be a noticeable difference, but technically the Neo 4 Beta is four grams lighter than its predecessor. And overall, especially considering how comfortable they are, super light in terms of their feel on feet. On feet, I find there to be two differences that are at the very least noticeable when compared to the Neo 3 Beta that these replace. The first being the knitted material across the top of the foot, which does feel a little bit tighter. It doesn't have quite as much stretch to it, which may be a good or bad thing, depending on the shape of your feet. I still find the boots to be incredibly comfortable. If you're talking about something in the speed category, it's really tough to beat this, particularly the leather in the forefoot. It is just incredibly soft and pliable. And then the second noticeable difference is going to be through the heel, particularly on the sides. They did make it five millimeters higher. And in general, it just seems to wrap your heel inside of your ankle area just that little bit more snug. It feels very, very conforming to your foot, if that makes any sense. And in general, the lockdown, the stability, the comfort, there is pretty much nothing to complain about here in regards to the Neo 4 Beta. This is pretty well as good as it gets as far as the fit of a football boot is concerned. From a width perspective, they have a decent amount of width to them. Obviously, the leather in the forefoot is going to stretch as you wear them in. And through the midfoot, even though it doesn't stretch quite as much as it previously did, they still are going to be suitable for a very wide variety of foot types. And as far as sizing is concerned, despite the new sole plate, the overall shaping in terms of length has not changed from the previous generation where they still run maybe about a quarter size long. I'm still wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and I have just a little bit of extra space that I normally wouldn't have. Personally, I would like it to be a little bit shorter, but if I went down half a size, the boots would simply be too small. So if you have a pair of Neo 3s, you kind of know exactly what to expect as far as sizing is concerned. It has not changed with the Neo 4. And for most people, I would strongly recommend going true to size. So in conclusion, there is no denying that the Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 4 Beta is an absolutely incredible pair of football boots. It builds upon the same concept that was originally introduced with the very first Morelia Neo and adds a level of refinement over the Neo 3 Beta it replaces that I really appreciate. With that said, the changes that they've made to this football boot over the previous model, especially considering the price increase, aren't exactly measurable. Other than the four grams less weight that you will see on a scale, will you actually notice a difference playing in a Neo 3 beta versus a Neo 4 beta? Probably not. I think the Neo 4 beta is an improvement over the Neo 3 it replaces, but more so for hardcore football boot nerd reasons rather than objective ones. In other words, if you don't care about the price tag and you just want the best Mizuno has to offer, then yeah, the 350 or so dollar price tag of this football boot is totally justified. It's a level of refinement you won't find from any other football boot on the market. But if you just want the made in Japan quality and the Mizuno Morelia Neo experience, save some money, go for the Neo 3 Beta. They're gonna be on sale now that this new model is out and it's basically the exact same football boot at a lower price tag.